What is going on with y'all, man? It's Black Balloon. And I'm coming back with another video, so y'all already know what's going on. All right, y'all. Y'all let me know if y'all still want that same music that I play in the intro. I don't know if I should switch it up yet or not, but I'm going um, to let y'all be the judge. And y'all let me know if I need a new intro or not, right? So, look, y'all already know what we're here to talk about. Um, a bunch of y'all, when I dropped that video about Jekyll Island, um, a bunch of y'all started commenting about the Georgia Godstones because obviously they were, you know, I guess blown away that same night or the same morning that I dropped that video, right? And um, also a bunch of y'all been um, hit, probably probably most of y'all been commenting about doing a CERN video ever since um, they kicked up, they kicked CERN back in motion, um, I think a few days ago on July 5th, if I'm not mistaken, right? So don't worry, the CERN video is coming. I'll do the CERN video for Sunday. Um, now for all of my new subs, I did have, I think, two videos on CERN on my old channel. So I'm going to go back and kind of redo the video just to kind of make it an entirely new video, do a whole new talk on it. Since so many people are interested in it now today and it's still very relevant. So we're going to get a good video going Sunday about CERN, right? All right, y'all. So to the topic of today, the Georgia Godstones, right? So the Georgia Godstones, we're just going to go over the Godstones for people that may not know what they are. Um... We're going to talk about what they are supposed to mean to the new world whenever that new world was to supposedly happen. Right. So let's start. Um, it sits in Elbert County, Georgia. The Georgia Godstones, they sit near the 33rd parallel. And we're going to take we're going to take some time to get into the significance of the 33rd parallel. And we're going to go over a little history of the 33rd parallel and all the things that have happened near the 33rd parallel just because you know i just want us to understand the significance of the occult and what they have to do with the georgia godstones and how everything that kind of happened in history you know a lot of major events and how they happened on the 33rd parallel right okay so for example we know we we know Obviously, the number 33 is not just a regular number when it comes to Freemasons, right? We know, and and and, and remember, you know, for, for the originals on my channel, y'all know I did a video, I did an entire video on the breakdown of the number 33. Um, I think I might have did two videos on this, but we'll go back, we'll, we'll just go back over a few facts because we know that Jesus died at the age of 33. So being 33, as that is why Freemasons use that number as mockeries, chosen to mock his son as well. It is the most important degree of Freemasonry, obviously. Also, um, it's the number of vertebrae that make up the human spine, the number of vertebrae that make up the human spine. Also, your foot has 33 joints in it. All right. So for the basics, what is the 33rd parallel? Right. So the 33rd parallel is basically a circle of latitude that is 33 degrees north of the Earth's equator. It is approximately at the midpoint between the equator, which is zero degrees and the Arctic Circle. That is 66 point six degrees north latitude. This is what makes the 33rd parallel because it is at the midpoint between the equator which is at zero degrees and the arctic circle which is at 66.6 degrees north so that gives you your occult connection on why everything sits that's really important in history and all the events that have happened, all the assassinations and bombings on the 33rd parallel, this lets you know why. Because the numbers are powerful. 666 six, six, and your number 33. So that was basically us just going over the little meaning um, of basically the 33rd parallel right 
And so I think on this part, before we get into the Georgia Godstones completely, I just want to give y'all a couple of more examples of the 33rd parallel and, you know, just how, how much things in history have taken place on it, right? Also, if you want to look at this from a spiritual standpoint on why so many things take place on the, on the 33rd parallel or at least near the 33rd parallel, which I kind of um, I kind of I'm, I'm kind of going to go into this a little bit later in this video when it kind of deals with Bermuda Triangle um, is I, I would say is because the basically the spiritual layer between our world and the spiritual world is thin at those points and that at those points, you know, I guess sort of supernatural things take place because, it, you know, people actually live on the 33rd parallel, not near the 30 per, 33rd parallel. They actually live on it. So some of those people, they may experience supernatural things that you may not experience in the area that you live on because you're not next. You know, you don't live next to these basically these portals, basically places where the veil is really thin between the physical and spiritual world where, you know, just all kind of things that are unseen to the natural eye can happen and will happen. So I guess in a sense, that's kind of like another meaning of, you know, I guess the spiritual meaning of why things happen and why they choose to use a 33rd parallel. Right. So in the northern hemisphere, the parallel in question makes its way through the major U.S. cities such as Los Angeles, Phoenix, Dallas, or the town of Roswell. All right, so John F. Kennedy was assassinated on the 33rd parallel. Um, also, his brother Robert was um, assassinated on the 33rd parallel. Um, President um, Franklin Roosevelt, Franklin D. Roosevelt, he died also near the 33rd parallel. See, the first nuclear explosion took place in New Mexico on the 33rd parallel. The 33rd U.S. president was the one that authorized the two nuclear bombs that destroyed those Japanese cities. Those cities straddled the 33rd parallel. Um, and there, there, are, there are a lot more examples, man, of, um, you know, things that sit on the 33rd parallel and basically how they just relate back um, to the occult and things that happened in the history um, of our time, which is, you know, a lot of that stuff is is very important. All right. So I just wanted to go over that because it gives us a little insight on why the Georgia Godstones sit on the 33rd parallel. Right. Um, just just to, just to kind of give us a little insight on what the Godstones are actually connected to. OK. So the story behind the Godstones, um, it, it goes like this, right? So, and I found this on the internet. Um, I didn't actually know before I looked this up completely, just the history on the Godstones. Um, I, of course, I knew about the Godstones because they are right here in Georgia. Um, and have I ever went to go look at them in person? No, I haven't. Um, it definitely would have been an easy trip because it's just about an hour away, but I never did. So anyways, all right. So in June 1979, a well-dressed articulate man walked into the office of the Moore Elberton Granite Company in Elberton, Georgia, and said that he wanted to know the cost of building a large monument to the conservation of humanity. He identified himself as Mr. R.C. Christian and said that he represented a small group of Americans who wished to remain anonymous. All right. So we this already sound like some secret society shit. Right. So although Eberton is considered the granite capital of the United States, which that is pretty interesting. I didn't know that. So Eberton, Georgia, is the granite capital of the United States. The president of the granite company was skeptical of undertaking a project of this magnitude and very skeptical of the stranger in his office in his, in his office. He asked Mr. Christian to speak to the company's banker, Mr. Wyatt Martin, thinking that that would be the last um, thinking it would be the last he saw of him. So I'm giving you the backstory of how the Godstones were created. However, Mr. Christian went to the bank and explained to Mr. Martin that although his name had symbolic meaning, he and the group he represented were very serious about erecting these Godstones for the conservation of the world and to herald the coming age of reason. 
Should there be a holocaust in the civilized world, the group wished the Guidestones to be one of the most enduring things to help humanity start anew. Were they telling us of things to come, a holocaust or not? Because it seems a little weird for them to say something like that as to be the reason why they want to build a Guidestone to basically help humanity start a new world. Um, quote unquote, a new world, a new world order. All right. So uh, recently, you know, recently back, I, I don't know when this happened, but it was a California man named John Connor has called for the Godstones to be removed from public property, saying they are an occult monument, which they are, because just reading why the guys wanted to start the monument in the first place gives off those occult secret society vibes of the new world order. Right. Then he also says he believes the name of the guy who first came in wanted to start the Godstones. Remember, R.C. Christian is actually a reference to Christian Rosencruz, the supposed founder of the Rosen of the Rosicrucians, a secret society dating back to the 15th century, which is very they are very powerful, as in the Rosicrucians. I don't know if they go by the Rosicrucians anymore or if today their family name or society name has changed or the people that were associated with the Rosicrucians. It gets really boring if you you know, you're not really interested in finding out about it and you have to go back deep in order to learn about the Rosicrucians. All right. So um, what it says is certainly the group that commissioned Georgia Guidestones is one of the many similar groups working together toward a new world order, um, a new world economic system and a new world spirituality, meaning bringing in a new God and all kind of new beliefs that are not from the old. Behind those groups, however, are dark spiritual forces. Yes, they are. Without understanding the nature of those dark forces, it is impossible to understand the unfolding of world events, basically the depopulation of the world, which is an ongoing agenda by the occult, which is why those God stones existed in the first place in eight different languages. So multiple, you know, um, I guess mul multiple communities would be able to start a new world. Right. So. Um, now, you know, we, we can kind of just, just for people to know, let's get into the messages of the Georgia Godstones. What do the Godstones actually say? All right. So the one that everyone knows the most, no one knows, you probably don't even know the rest of the 10, you know, supposed commandments on the Godstones. Everyone just knows the first main one, which is maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. So these people feel that the world should only have about 500 million people in order to stay perpetual balance with nature itself, right? Because too many people just destroys the atmosphere, destroys the world, blah, 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 right? So on and so on. Basically, the depopulation agenda down to 500 million people, um, which would which would be wow. Um, I think the United States alone has less than 500 million people. So that just gives you an idea of how many people would actually be on the world. It would, Literally, everyone would live in one country and that would be it. The rest of the world would be probably like off limits. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. But all right. So let, let's get right back to it. One through 10. OK, number one, again, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Number two, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Number three, unite humanity with the living new language. Number four, rule passion, faith, tradition and all things with tempered reason. They're telling rule R. U-L-E, passion, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Hmm. Number five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Number six, let all nations rule eternally resolving external disputes in a world court. Number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Number eight, balance personal rights with social duties. Number nine, prize truth, beauty, love, Seeking harmony with the infinite. Prize, truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Number 10, be not a cancer on earth. Leave room for nature. Then again, leave room for nature. All right. Now, giving my personal opinion one through 10. Now, one sounds 
you know, it sounds horrible. It sounds like, wow, you want to destroy and kill the entire world and take us down to 500 million people. That's disgusting. Why do you want to do that? Then once you get to reading from two to 10, it gets a little less, you know, like evil feeling. It gets more like, okay, this could actually be a decent world. <laughs> this, it could actually be something decent that we're living in. You know, but but just like it said, just like it said, behind those groups, however, are dark spiritual forces. And without understanding the nature of those dark forces, it is impossible to even understand what they are trying to tell you here through one through ten. Even though it sounds good, it sounds good to your ears like, yeah, you know, pre protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Of course, that that should be any any nation. The nation we're living in now should be that way. But is it not necessarily? Let all nations rule eternally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Now, that's that's crazy. Um, avoid petty laws and useless officials. That that should be something that, you know, persists in our world today. It's like some of these are things that should actually be going on. You know, um, they, they are things that kind of make sense. But it's just the it's the people behind it. It's the. You know, it's what they want it to be in the future as far as a new world order. This is not necessarily for, you know, it's not necessarily good for you. This is this one through ten, this these ten commandments on the Georgia God songs. It doesn't necessarily mean that that new world is just going to be the perfect world just because ten commandments were put here on how to rule a new world. You see what I'm saying? Um so, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Eliminating the population of the earth to 500 million would basically require the extermination of nine tenths of the world's population. Nine tenths, people. That's why I said America. I don't think we have 500 million people. I think we're like in the threes to 400 million people in the country. So just think about that. There's not even 500 million people here. <laughs> that is actually wow. So it says the American Stonehenge reference to establishing a world court foreshadows the current move to create an international criminal court and the world government. It definitely does. Um, the Guy Stones puts an emphasis on preserving nature, anticipates the environmental movement of the 1990s, and the reference to seeking harmony with the infinite reflects the current effort to replace Christian beliefs with a new spirituality. And that has basically been going on for, you know, it's been going on for a long time. That's basically right out of the devil's handbook right there. Seeking harmony with the infinite. Who is the infinite? You know what I'm saying? Who's the infinite? Who, who are they really talking about? Because I know who's my infinite that I pray to. And that's the most high. But seeking harmony with the infinite, you know. And gaining a new spirituality. What kind of new spirituality? We don't need new spirituality. There's nothing new about spirituality that we need to learn. In a sense of like an entirely different new spirituality. You know, not, I'm not talking about the things that we still need to learn daily as men and women. I'm just saying what they're talking about. A new spirituality. They're talking about believing in their God. You know, that... that um, that that antichrist spirituality they they on they're on some whole other shit you know um but definitely you know i actually haven't read the commandments the one through ten commandments on georgia god stones in a long time and that's why i said i know the i know most people don't even they don't even know the one through ten they only know the one about depopulating the world um so 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 really it just goes to show you you know um how much people ignore shit you know and just kind of like pay attention to one thing it's like you know it just it just kind of goes to show you the the control that you know this country has over people's mind you know what i'm saying we ignore things we ignore things at our own peril basically um because we only like digging into the small things that we really really like you know what i'm saying um so, yeah, man, um, basically, I guess one other fact about the Stonehenge, um, about the Godstones is the fact that 
It says the hole that you see in the stone was drilled in the center stone so that the North Star could be visualized through it at any moment. This was one of several requirements stipulated by R.C. Christian for the building of the American Stonehenge and reflects his obsession with the alignment of the stars, the sun and the moon, which we know we know occultists and, um, you know, um, a lot of occult members, they basically worship the alignment and the movement of all heavenly bodies um, in the skies. Right. And it's basically all a part of their religious ceremonies, a part of their rituals. Um, so it makes sense why um, he wanted the God Stones aligned with the North Star, which goes all the way back to why um, the God Stones basically sit on the 33rd parallel as well. Um, so you have to know, you know, just just to, just this kind of info, basically. You know, the guy stone sitting on the 33rd parallel, it being a hole in the middle of the stone. So you can per you can see the North Star perfectly fine every time you look through it from any point of looking through the stone. It lets you know that. This stuff definitely has dark forces behind it, because look at where it sits as a monument. Look at the message that is on the guide stones it's it's like it's written in code basically you know it, it's kind of giving you those oh yeah this would be a great new world to live in but really it's kind of like you know it, it's it's i feel like it's written in code it really means something completely different you know um that's just what that's just what i take from it you know this is this is definitely battling um this is definitely battling basically higher dark spiritual forces, things that we don't see and things that we should spiritually be aware of, you know, because they're they're doing things that aligns with things that we can't see, like how the monuments sit on the 33rd parallel that in a sense that in a sense is spiritual that in a sense is. That is done off of the power of numbers. That's done off of vibrational energy. That's done off of energy from that location. We have to ask ourselves, why do things sit on the 33rd parallel? Remember, the Bermuda, I think the Bermuda Triangle sits on the 33rd parallel. And so the Bermuda Triangle is something that gives us like an effect between worlds because it, it in a sense it could be like a portal because almost everything that goes in and out of the Bermuda Triangle loses you know loses power um you know the electrical boards and shit on planes and shit start to go out compasses don't work um you know the the magnetic grids and shit don't work in that area so it seems like it is a it's some kind of portal, maybe, you know, some kind of like split between dimensions where things here just don't operate the same. But it sits on the 33rd parallel or at least it sits near the 33rd parallel. So that lets you know that it is a spiritual thing. It is something from another world. It is something from the spirit world, possibly, that goes on at each, you know, at each 33rd parallel is what I'm saying. So. What I'm trying to explain without sounding crazy is that this is not something that, you know, physically we can understand. You know, first we have to have the knowledge on why this stuff sits on the 33rd parallel and what it actually has to do with the cosmos. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not just, you know, um, they didn't they didn't use the 33rd president to blow up the two Japanese cities that sit near the 33rd parallel for no reason. You see what I'm saying? This is serving gods at the end of the day. This is serving dark forces. This is serving the gods that they believe in, because you have to think, why are they doing rituals? Why are they doing doing things on the 33rd parallel? Like, what does it mean to you physically? Does it mean anything to you physically? You know, can you can you walk up to something that sits on a 33rd parallel like, you know, a city? You can be in Phoenix. You can be in L.A. Now, obviously, there's a lot of dark energy that goes around in some of these places that sit on that parallel, the 33rd parallel. But 
It's not anything that's physical. You see what I'm saying? So once again, this is just me trying to relate and get you to understand that this stuff is spiritual. This stuff is done by dark forces that have knowledge of things that we don't have knowledge about. And it's okay to not have that kind of knowledge. It's okay to not go searching for it and to not quite actually understand it. It's okay because we're not meant to understand all of this stuff, but we're definitely meant to be uh, aware of it as much as we can. You know, um, and if any of y'all have any more reasons as to why this stuff takes place, um, how it does and where it takes place. You know, please let me know in the comments um, because we're all here to just kind of learn, piggyback off each other and, you know, each one teach one. Y'all already know how it goes. Um, so I guess to kind of wrap this video up, you know, I guess we'll end it with the Godstones ultimately being knocked down. Now, they gave us around 4 a.m. that supposedly a bomb went off and. Um, people up to a mile away, they didn't really hear or see anything, but people that lived inside that mile radius of the Godstone said that they felt, um, you know, vibrations and they felt the bomb or whatever go off in the middle of the night. And then, of course, they proceeded to knock the rest of the Godstones down. Um, and a lot of people look at it as like the fall or the beginning to the fall of the cabal, the fall of the occult, because a lot of people actually look at the Godstones as being satanic, which they definitely are. Um, if I'm not mistaken, a recent um, a recent lady that may have been running for something here in Georgia, she actually made a campaign that if she was elected, you know, she would she would knock down the satanic Godstones. So clearly they have been relevant as far as being knocked down for quite some time now. Now, I'm not going to sit here and speculate as to why they were knocked down, because it is, it's definitely a random event. Now, if they knock them down and they never get put back up, I think that would be more telling than them knocking them down and then just pitting them right back up um, in a few months when they're remade and so on and so on. Now, I, I can't guarantee that. I don't know if they're going to be remade and they're just going to pop them back up. Or is this really a time for change? And the Godstones were actually knocked down because, you know, this is just what is becoming of the time that we're living in. Things are flipping. Things is changing. God is turning his hand and monuments like those will be knocked down because they're not from what we believe in. They're not from the most high. These are occult monuments meant you know, well, at least they were supposed to be like indestructible to be here just in case the world ended and so on and so on. But clearly, you know, clearly a bomb just blew it right up. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, I thought this video was more important to just go over the history of the Godstones, what they really mean, a little bit about the 33rd parallel and so on. Not so much about them being knocked down, because right now there's not much you know, there's there's just not much to go on without without us doing a bunch of speculating as to why they were actually knocked down. And if they were actually knocked down by a random person or was this a timed event meant to happen right now, this day, you know. So, yeah, man, y'all already know what's going on, man. I hope y'all enjoyed that talk. Hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Of course, like I said, let me know anything y'all got to you know, say in the comments, anything y'all might have for me, um, you know, that y'all might know and I might didn't know or something. Y'all go ahead and let me know in the comments, man. It's Friday. I hope y'all have a good weekend. Like I said, we'll come back Sunday with the CERN video. And yeah, man, y'all already know what's going on. It's Black Balloon and I'm going to see y'all soon. All right. I'm out.